My name is Hans van der Kwast. In this video I'm going to introduce you to thermal infrared sensors. After this lecture you'll be able to give examples of thermal infrared sensors, give examples of lens surface temperature products, and explain the trade-offs between spatial and temporal resolutions of thermal infrared satellite remote sensing sensors. Let's first look at infrared thermometers. These are thermal infrared sensors that don't result in an image, but you can read the temperature of an object from the LCD screen. It has a guiding laser that helps you to see which object you're reading the temperature from. You need to correct the temperature that is read with the emissivity value, which you can set on the device. Also, these sensors can be calibrated using a black body calibration device that you see on the picture. There are also thermal infrared cameras that you're probably more familiar with. Like with normal cameras, you take a picture of uh, an object and it will create an image, but it uses a thermal infrared band to give an indication of the temperature of the object that you're looking at. Also, these images need to be corrected for the emissivity of the objects. In this example, you can see that the uh, motors of uh, vehicles are warmer than the environment and also you can see the energy leakage from windows. We can also measure thermal infrared radiation from space using satellite sensors. Currently the most popular sensors are Landsat 8 and Landsat 9. They have the TIRS sensor which measures the thermal infrared in two channels, channel 10 and 11, and it has a special resolution of 100 meters and a revisit time of 16 days. MODIS is also often used. It has many spectral bands in the thermal infrared. However, the spatial resolution is one kilometer, while the revisit time is one to two days. There's a nice web page from ITC University of Twente where you can select a part of a spectrum and see which sensors are available. When you click on a sensor, you can get more information about its bands and uh, the spatial and temporal resolution. Sometimes it's much easier to use a ready-made satellite temperature product instead of processing thermal infrared images yourself. MODIS has several products at different spatial and temporal resolutions available for you, as you can see in this table. Also, Landsat has a Landsat Collection 2 surface temperature product. When we use thermal infrared sensors, we have to be aware of trade-offs. There are trade-offs between the temporal and spatial resolution. When we need very high temporal resolution, such as daily MODIS images, we need to deal with the fact that we only have one kilometer pixels. If we need less frequent images, like with Landsat each 16 days, we can have a higher spatial resolution, for example of 100 meters. If we need to have much higher spatial resolutions, we are depending on on-demand sensors on airborne platforms. The spatial resolution of the thermal infrared bands is often much coarser than the spatial resolution of the optical bands. This has to do with the law of Stefan Boltzmann. The amount of energy emitted in the thermal part of the spectrum is much lower than the amount of energy emitted in the optical part of the spectrum. Downscaling algorithms exist, but they also increase uncertainty in the values. Like with optical images, also the thermal infrared bands are affected by cloud cover or haze, which will affect the result. Atmospheric corrections of thermal infrared bands are very important to obtain accurate temperature readings. While for the optical part of the electromagnetic spectrum, more and more satellite images at a very high spatial and temporal resolution become available, this is not the case for the thermal infrared sensors. Landsat provides some continuity, but for Sentinel there has not been any available yet, and a future uh, launch is uh, planned for 2028 where we will have the Land Service Temperature Monitoring mission as part of the Sentinel constellation. These kind of data are essential for climate change monitoring, for agricultural applications and ecosystem monitoring. In this video you've learned about thermal infrared sensors, land surface temperature products and trade-offs between the spatial and temporal resolution of these satellite sensors.